Hey guys, it's Adrian over BHA here bringing you a new video. This was mentioned in my status update video uh, at the start of November. Uh, this was actually supposed to come out back in October, and I keep pushing it back and pushing it back, but I think I finally got it put together as best as I could. This is the fully kiosk browser video, uh, kind of showing you how to uh, set it up and use it with uh, your tablet and working with Home Assistant, using some of the sensors built into Fully Kiosk Browser, as well as, uh, you know, setting up a um, tablet with Fully Kiosk Browser to use, uh, you know, as a touchpad for a Home Assistant. I really like Fully Kiosk Browser. I think it works uh, pretty well. There's so much to this application that you really need to check out their website and look at all the cool features that you can do with it and stuff, because it is amazing. But uh, I'm going to try to at least cover some of that here today. One thing I want to throw out there at the start of this video uh, doesn't really have anything to do with Fully Kiosk, but I promised the guys over at Zimmy Smart that I would do this. Uh, today they're having this huge sale at Ally Express on all Zimmy Smart products. I think everything's up to like 62% uh, off or something. So um, here's the coupon for that. Uh, you know, you can. Uh, Pause the video, scan that QR code if you want to take advantage of their sale that they have going on. Alright, here is a, a forum page on, uh, you know, using some of the fully kiosk browser sensors and stuff within Home Assistant. Uh, Fully Kiosk has its own uh, REST API built into it, so uh, that's a really cool feature that allows you to uh, kind of set that up easily with Home Assistant. And I'll have all these links in the description below, so you can just copy and paste them and check them all out. All right, so let's do a quick run through of everything we're gonna cover in this video. So of course, for starters, we'll uh, go through installing Fully Kiosk browser on your tablet. Uh, once we do that, then we'll do some uh, configuration in the uh, settings of Fully Kiosk just so that we can, uh, you know, to at least run through the basic setup. Uh, once that's done, then we're going to add the multi sensor to has. And when I say multi sensor, it's just a sensor in Home Assistant that'll have a whole bunch of information all coming from Fully Kiosk. Once we get that added, then we're going to uh, break out the battery sensor out of that just so you can see what that would look like if you want to see just the battery sensor. And then we're going to go ahead and add in the uh, front facing camera off of our tablet, which we are pulling in from uh, Fully Kiosk as well. Pretty cool little feature there. And lastly, I'm just going to show you kind of uh, the loveless interface of Home Assistant running on the tablet and kind of see how that looks and everything. So let's get started. All right, so just to give you an idea how awesome I think Fully Kiosk is anyway, I am running this on an old uh, Samsung Galaxy Note 8. So this thing uh, is back from like, uh, what, 2013? So we're looking at like roughly a six-year-old tablet. And I mean, this works great as a little touchpad. I just have it mounted in my office and uh, you know, with my uh, home assistant uh, set up on there. And of course it'll also run like tile board or uh, home panel or any of those as well if you prefer to use one of those. But I think it works great even on this old tablet. So definitely worth checking out. So of course we'll just uh, basically pull up the Google Play Store. You're gonna do a search for fully kiosk browser. Go ahead and install. And of course it'll take a minute to download and go through the full install. And once we get that downloaded, uh, you know, and installed and everything, then of course uh, we're ready to jump on to the next step. All right, so uh, of course there's all kinds of settings in the uh, Fully Kiosk browser here uh, that you can modify and change. But the few things that we want to run through just for the sake of this video. Now, one thing to note uh, before I get any further with this, one thing to note on this is 
all the items listed in the settings that have plus next to them, uh, those require a uh, paid license for fully kiosk browser. And I, I think the just a single license is like five or six bucks. And then of course you can get what they call like a site license, which gives you like 10 devices or something like that as well. I currently only have the single license, but they do offer an upgrade path, uh, which I will probably uh, you know, take advantage of where I can uh, then add multiple devices because um, it's definitely worth the five or six bucks uh, to try out all of the additional features. And a lot of this stuff here, like we're doing with um, the setting up the sensors and stuff in Home Assistant, you can't do that unless you have the uh, paid license. So just something to keep in mind uh, when you're playing around with this because you will uh, you, you will probably want to upgrade to that uh, better license to be able to take advantage of everything. But uh, we're going to go down here to where it says remote administration. You want to, of course, enable that and then uh, set up the uh, remote admin password because you will have to have a password set up on this for everything to work properly. Once we get that in there, then we're gonna jump back over and we're gonna look for the, uh, we're gonna look for motion detection. Go ahead and enable that as well. And then where it says camera ID, you can set whatever camera ID your front facing camera is if you plan on using the camera. I think on mine it's zero. Uh, you may have to play around with it a little bit. Uh, you know, the front camera is one ID and then the back camera is something else. So just um, you may uh, do a little trial and error to pick out which uh, what your tablet associates uh, with each camera. Plug that in there and then we're going to jump back over and go to uh, we're looking for web content settings. And then where it says start URL, this is going to be the URL of your uh, Home Assistant uh, web page. But I got part of it in there. Let me add the port number in the end. There we go. Once you have all of that in there, then we're ready to move on to the next step. All right, so we're gonna start by adding what I call a multi-sensor into Home Assistant. Now this is a sensor that just has a whole bunch of information. Uh, I mean, it's nothing special in Home Assistant. It's a regular sensor, but uh, you'll be able to click on it and it'll list out all kinds of information here. Uh, so we're gonna do this by editing our sensor.yaml file here. And of course, I'll have all this in my description below so you can just copy and paste it. Uh, but we'll find an open spot down here at the bottom. Uh, the platform is going to be REST because we're taking advantage of the Fully Kiosk REST API. Uh, for the name, I'm just going to call this one Office Touchpad. You can call yours whatever you want. Uh, and I'm going to just list out a whole bunch of the different attributes that, that fall into the uh, this uh, API here. So under JSON attributes, we're going to say battery level, kiosk mode, screen brightness, motion detector state, maintenance mode, app free memory, app used memory, total free memory, total used memory, hostname 4, IP 4, Mac, location latitude, location longitude, location altitude, start URL, and current URL. And then of course we'll set the resource this will be the path to your fully kiosk uh, device uh, IP address and stuff. Um, I have mine in my secrets.yaml file, but by default it's port 2323. Um, so of course the resource would be something like HTTP colon slash slash 10.10.10.35 10 uh, colon 2323 or whatever the, the default port is um, for uh, your fully kiosk setup. Uh, for the value template, I'm just going to say value underscore json dot 
is screen on. That'll be like the default sensor for this uh, setup. Once we have all that in there, we're gonna go ahead and save it. And then of course we need to uh, jump over to the web interface. We're gonna go in here to server control. We'll do a check config. And then of course we're gonna restart Home Assistant for all the changes to take effect. We'll give that a second to come back up. And then lastly, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna jump over to uh, my web interface here and just see what that sensor looks like. As you can see down at the bottom of this miscellaneous card, it says Office Touchpad, and of course it says True. That's uh, saying that the screen is turned on. And of course, if we select that, you can see all that different information that it's pulling into this sensor. So there's the battery level, kiosk mode, screen brightness, all that information is there. So very cool, uh, very nice little feature, especially uh, if you just want a single sensor to have all that information. But if you're like me, I like to have the battery level broken out for sure, because that's probably the one I use more than anything else, because I can set up some automations with that uh, to make sure that this tablet doesn't get uh, too low on the battery. So what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna jump over this next step and I'll show you how to break that one out. All right, so uh, in order to add this particular battery sensor, we have to leave the other sensor in place already because basically what we're going to do is we're going to pull that battery sensor information um, out of that multi-sensor. Now, that's the way I'm doing it. You can choose to do just the battery sensor from the REST API if that's all you want, and that will work as well, but we're going to take advantage of uh, both sensors we're gonna take advantage of that multi-sensor because I may use a, a few different ones out of that sensor. And I still like having one sensor that has all that information pulled into it. All right, so we're gonna edit our sensor.yaml file again. This time the platform is gonna be template. Now for the sensors, I'm just gonna call this one office touchpad battery because that's uh, what I'm pulling out. Uh, friendly name, I'm gonna again say just Office Touchpad Battery. For the unit of measurement, since it's battery, we're gonna set that to uh, percent. And then of course for the value template, uh, it's gonna be states.sensor dot office underscore touchpad which is basically the name of that other sensor we already created dot attributes dot battery level and it has to be written just like the json attribute is up above so it'll be battery lowercase and then the l in level will be capital put all that in there and of course we'll go ahead and save that and then we're going to jump over to uh, our web interface again and just we'll check config to make sure everything looks good. And then, of course, restart Home Assistant one more time for the uh, update to my sensors.yaml file. Give that a second to come back up. And then, of course, we're going to jump over here uh, to my web interface again and just take a look at that newly created sensor. Now, as you can see now down at the bottom of my miscellaneous card, there is a office touchpad battery sensor, which currently says 66%. Of course, you click on that and it shows the life cycle of that battery, uh, you know, started out at 100% and it's slowly dropping. This is an old tablet. For the most part, I usually leave it uh, plugged in all the time. Like I said, it's really a touchpad in my office, so uh, it doesn't get unplugged very often. So just another way uh, that we'll be able to set up some more automations if you want, because with that, you'll be able to uh, possibly set up an automation that says, uh, hey, if the battery level gets below 20%, you know, send a notification to remind you to plug in the tablet, stuff like that uh, that you can kind of do with it, which makes it kind of cool. Let's go ahead and jump on to the next step. All right, so uh, since my tablet, of course, has a camera built into the uh, front of it and the back, we're gonna take advantage of that front-facing camera. You can use the motion detection with the, uh, with the tablet. It isn't true motion detection, whereas it's only gonna, uh, you know, 
every time it updates that camera feed, which is only every few seconds, it will notice uh, a change in the picture in the camera. It's not true motion detection, but uh, you know, if you don't have anything in there, you can certainly take advantage of that. It, it's all right. So I'm gonna edit my cameras.yaml file here and find an open spot down here at the bottom. Uh, for the platform for this, it's gonna be uh, generic. For the name, I'm just gonna call it Office Touchpad. And all we need to enter now is the still image URL. And again, I have mine stored in my secrets.yaml file here. So I'm just gonna say exclamation secret and then office underscore touchpad underscore cam. We'll go ahead and save it. And again, we're gonna jump over to the web interface here. We'll do a check config. And then of course, restart Home Assistant one more time for these changes to take effect. We'll give that a second to come back up. And then here is what it will look like, of course, uh, for me anyway, on my uh, Home Assistant front end. You can see there is the camera feed from the Office touchpad, and it doesn't update, but every few seconds, so it's nothing super awesome, but if you wanna take advantage of the camera on your tablet that you're gonna use as a touchpad, this is certainly the best way to do that. I think it's pretty cool. Let's jump on to that last step. All right, so um, here is my tablet. Uh, like I said, it's a Galaxy Note 8 tab, whatever. For a touchpad, I think it works great. It's got fully kiosk browser going, and as you can see here, there's my loveless interface. Uh, click around on it a little bit. It works pretty good. Not Nothing super fancy, but definitely... Uh, works fine for just an extra touchpad in my office so I think it works well with fully kiosk browser and as you can see it'll probably work even better if you have like a newer tablet like I said this one's what six years old so uh, newer tablets will probably be even more responsive and work a little bit better than this one so just a few things you can do with fully kiosk browser and home assistant um, like I said if you haven't tested it out yet I think it's definitely worth checking out it is a pretty awesome little setup and of course don't forget if you want to take advantage of all these sensors and everything, you will need to update, upgrade to the paid version of Fully Kiosk. Let's do a quick run through of everything we covered in this video. So of course, for starters, uh, we just started out by installing Fully Kiosk browser on my tablet. Uh, once we did that, we configured Fully Kiosk in the settings. Uh, once that was done, we added a multi-sensor into Home Assistant. Uh, after that, we broke out the battery sensor from that multi-sensor uh, so that it had its own uh, separate sensor. And then, of course, after that, we added our camera from the tablet into Home Assistant as well. And then lastly, we just kind of took a look at uh, the Levels interface running on the tablet. That's the end of the video, guys. Uh, like I said, it's a, it's a kind of a lengthy video. I tried to cover uh, everything as best as I could. Obviously, there's tons more stuff you can do with Fully Kiosk. Um, definitely worth checking out on your own. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. As always, if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around. Thanks.